OK, so we're going to solve this equation. And our solution relies on just if you divide by 3 on both sides, you can see this becomes the cube root of 3x minus 2 is equal to x cubed plus 2, all divided by 3. And at this point, you might spot that on the left-hand side, we've got the cube root, we're multiplying by 3, we're subtracting 2, whereas on the right-hand side, we've got x cubed, we're dividing by 3, and we're adding 2. And it turns out that actually, if we define the right-hand side as a function, so we say that this is f of x, then the left-hand side is actually the inverse function of this. This would be f inverse of x. And you can check this if you like. So the way to check this is you could first of all write your original function as y equals x cubed plus 2 all divided by 3. And then we swap the role of x and y to invert this. So then we would write x equals y cubed plus 2 over 3. And then we just need to make y the subject. So you see here we multiply by 3, subtract 2, and then cube root. So you do indeed get y equals 3x minus 2, the cube root of this is indeed our inverse function then. So how does this help us? Well, if we draw a sketch of each of these functions, so first of all, if we draw a sketch of y equals f of x, this is a cubic, which is going to look like this sort of picture. So this is a graph of y equals x cubed plus 2 over 3. And then if we wanted to draw the inverse function on the same graph, then this would just be a reflection in the line y equals x. So here we've got the line y equals x, and then we reflect this. So then we get a similar looking picture reflected like this. And you can see that the two intersect each other on this line y equals x. Now the picture could look a bit different. We could perhaps have more intersections, depending on exactly where our cubic is in relation to the line y equals x. So we could actually have more intersections if our cubic is perhaps more like this picture, and then its inverse would intersect, not just in this one point here, but it would actually also intersect potentially in another two points here. And this is really useful for actually solving our equation now, because you can see that the solutions where f of x is equal to f inverse x are exactly the points where the graphs intersect with the line y equals x. So now we need to solve this equation. We've got y equals x, but then we can also think of this as where does our function y equals x cubed plus 2 all over 3, where does this meet the line y equals x? So now our equation just becomes x equals x cubed plus 2 over 3, which is a much nicer cubic equation to work with then. Now to solve this, we can just multiply by 3 on both sides and subtract 3x, which will give us 0 is x cubed take away 3x plus 2. And at this point, you might be able to see that x equals 1 is a solution here. If you substitute this in, this would give us 0. So then x equals 1 is a solution, which means x minus 1 is a factor. And then our quadratic factor then, first of all, we need to get x cubed, so we need to multiply x by x squared. But then we don't want any x squared terms. We've got, at the moment, negative x squared, so we need to add in another x, so then we get a positive x squared, which cancels that. And then to get negative 3x, at the moment we've got negative 1 times x, so we need another negative 2 to multiply by this x to make negative 3x. So take away 2 like this, and you can see that the minus 1 and the minus 2 multiply to make the positive 2. Then we can even factorise this quadratic as well, so we get x minus 1 multiplied by here. This factors as x minus 1 and x plus 2. So we actually get a repeated root then, x is 1, and our other solution is x is negative 2. So we've got two solutions to our original equation, x is negative 2 and x is positive 1. And I think it's interesting to know that actually both of the drawings from earlier were wrong. So if we draw a sketch of what our graph looks like again, this is going to now, if we draw in y equals x, we're going to have a point where we're just touching the line y equals x there, and then the inverse function is again going to just touch that in a single point for this repeated root at x equals 1. So then we've got our two solutions at x is negative 2 and our second one when x is positive 1. 